Alright, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today I guess will be Wildcard Friday, because usually that's when uh, FNM events come up, and sometimes if they're good, we'll play them on the channel. Because, you know, I like to keep a little bit of variety on this place. So, let's check it out, shall we? It's Omniscience today, so it's not Omniscience Draft, though that would be lovely if it were. Uh, it's just an Omniscience event, which basically means that they give us a 150 card deck, and we can play all the cards... Uh, in our opening hand for free, basically, and we don't need lands. Uh, so it's a little bit of an RNG fest, for sure, because 150 cards, you play them for free. A lot of the times they don't go anywhere. I like to play these, even though they can be quite hit or miss. Um, I like to play them mostly because it gives you an insight into the individual who built them, and you start to question why they added cards. So the last time we uh, played this, uh, Karlheim wasn't out. And I think the last um, Historic Anthology wasn't either. So I'm curious to see what kind of cards they've added for that. Uh, or even kind of what the the theme is. Because sometimes there's a theme to them. Like, um, I think there was a lot of enchantments, matters kind of things when Theros came about and things like, of that nature. And I think Kaladesh kind of had an artifacts matters style thing. I can see Kaldheim's got the runes in there. Which is draw a card. Which is interesting, because any card that says draw a card is the best kind of card. Alrund. A little bit hit or miss, but card advantage all the same. Yeah, there's just all sorts. Like, I don't know. It's, it's the weirdest thing, because I'm sure I could go through this and I could find a card and go, why on earth is that even in in this draft? Like, right there. Zealot of the God Pharaoh. Never heard of this card. What the hell is it? Four mana, four, three can pay five. You do get a, an Omniscience Emblem, I believe, which gives you all five colours of mana. So we can technically use that. Deals two damage to target opponent or Planeswalker. You see, that's just bloody useless. <laughs> that is quite useless. I guess it's in here. So I could use Switcheroo to exchange control of two target creatures. That seems like a thing. Yeah, it's just There's just so much weirdness in this one. I can see they're a little bit low on card advantage, or at least true card advantage. There's not too many draw twos in here. There's divination, uh, funeral rites? Yeah. So I guess there's two in a 150 card deck, but a lot of them seem like um, sort of situational card advantage, like ECD gives you that uh, chapter three reanimation, so it's kind of like a two for one. Uh, it comes down, removes taxes, and then gives you a card back. So it's a little bit weird like that. Um, I feel like you've just kind of got to go all in or not at all. Like, oh my god, there's Slin Voder in here. Just why? <laughs> when your opponents can play all their cards for free. Kind of doesn't seem worth kicking. This is what I mean though. Like, just you get, you get to look into the eyes of whoever balances these formats. Or into the brain, into the mind. It's just, I just, I don't know. There's a Divine Gambit here. That one kind of makes sense because you're going to empty your hands. So that actually in this format seems like solid removal. You're never going to play around this in a million years, so. Yeah, I don't know. Let's not mess about anyway. Uh, let's check this out. I just, sometimes I'm blown away. And uh, this one's a bit of a weird one. Yeah, if you do enjoy today's content anyway, guys, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And uh, yeah, let's get to it, shall we? This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content, or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month, then hit the join button down below or check out the Patreon link in the description. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. Alrighty then, let's get in, and I just realised that I've got my deck tracker up and it doesn't work, so there is that. Uh, I mean, sure, we get one free mulligan, so... I don't know. This is guaranteed removal, pretty much, on anything that matters. This just turns all my dead creatures into absolute bombs, and this answers one of my opponent's cards, so... I feel like it's kind of worth it. I just don't know if I actually play anything on turn one, which is the strangest thing. I think I keep and I just immediately pass the turn. 
So let's auto pass so that our opponent kind of feels like it's uh, it's their go. Should mention as well. I think I forgot to mention that uh, this is free to enter, and you get uh, two rare ICRs, aka forty gems, if you're me. Okay, self replicator. Immediately triggering the replicator. That's a problem. If you were curious, this thing is a weirder. I'm gonna need a wrath for this board. Yep. Exile all non-land permanents. D why the hell is Draugr's Helm here? And what do I even do now? <laughs> Alright, I tell you what. I'll get rid of one of the tokens, turn it into a 3-3 and redraw. I do believe I'm already dead, to be honest. There's a Toski. I'll play a Toski, I guess. Play a Draugr's Helm. We can pay the three because of our Omniscience Emblem. Oh, thank God it actually just did it for me. I'll downfall one of the other two twos. So they can't kind of go absolutely insane. And then... I mean, this is at the beginning of combat. It almost makes no sense to play it, except for mind rot abilities and things like that. I'd rather not have it mind rotted. I don't feel like they're going to be using uh, Perilous Vault to blow up any permanents, so... It's most likely going to be either Artifact Removal off the top. If they've got that, it's probably just as likely as... Oh my god, this opponent is running so hot. It's probably just as likely as uh, Hand Disruption would be the Artifact Removal. So I'll just get into play. Well, there's the Artifact Removal right there, ECD. Opponent is an absolute top deck god, by the way. Historic Spell, Removal for God Pharaoh's Gift. Tapping down my team. Yep, there he goes. I'm back to just needing a Wrath again, and even then, ECD brings back Self-Replicator, so... Kind of back in the same spot again. I just I just don't have a board state. I Maybe I should have taken the Mole. I don't know. Like, some people... Oh my god, are you kidding me? Historic Spell. Card Advantage Engine. And taps the team. Wow. Guys. Can I have whatever my opponent drank to become an absolute god? Sack a creature. <laughs> Next game. <laughs> Okay then, well, we go first, we immediately force them to discard, and then we get to play a Seeker's Chariot and draw with the Orrery. Yeah, seems fine. So let's lead off with, uh, discard two cards. You. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if our opponent immediately explodes to this. We leave them with their best card, so they're gonna redraw cast out in order to dig for counter magic probably and then discards brash taunter and inspiring leader okay uh we're gonna go with a seeker's chariot plus a green permanent into play and two cat tokens as well we get to chromatic orrery which the mana doesn't do anything but does allow us to draw a card with our five omniscience mana for a ral's outburst okay uh, I think I'll save that for hitting our opponent's creatures rather than just hitting our opponent's face for a redraw. You never know what our opponent might have here. Divine Gambit. Alright, so they're going to get rid of the Orrery, and then I get to put a permanent from my hand onto the battlefield, so I'm going to bolt them in the face now. Uh, well... 
Wasn't all that good, but I'll take a blood divination. Yep, Divine Gambit. Pretty good. And then God Eternal Ketra. So, this can block. Good to know. Uh, we got Bound in Gold. Now it can't. <laughs> As it turns out. Uh, it has a triggered ability, which is still going to be effective, but... Uh, this does allow me to crew with the chariot. Getting in and then having the spare creature to sacrifice here. And draw three, which is really good. It's a Ronus, a Daxos, and a cast out. Alright, so we're going to play the Daxos. I'm going to hold the Ronus, I feel like. I don't know, though. Actually, no. What we're going to do is we're going to cast out a Ketra now. I think it's better than giving our opponent a cast trigger. Put that just back in their deck where it's not going to do much good. And then give our opponent the chance to top deck a little. Gain some life. And then Maronis just becomes much better on the next turn when we've got many more threats to double damage down on. Wasn't exactly the best uh, card draw spell in the world, but... Ooh, Halvar. Enchanted or equipped creatures. Kinda neither, but we can make one have Vigilance. So I guess that's what we want. So let's... Um... Put it on Daxos, I guess. Crew. And Ronus. Threaten lethal. Eat to extinction. All right. So they get to set up the top card of their library. We know that a, a Ketra is coming soon. And we know that the top card above it isn't all that good either. So, yeah, not bad. I could have played that smoother. Uh, it's been a it's been a long day for me, guys. So my brain's a little bit fried. So I do hope that you'll forgive me for my sloppy play, which might be coming slightly more than occasionally today. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, though, it's a nice, nice casual format anyway. So who really cares, right? You comment section individual. You care more than most people probably should. I see you. I see you in my comment section. Hi! How's it going? Next game. Okay, we're in. This looks to me like a free mulligan. The sand is completely reactive. With no sign of a proactive play that can actually... Win me the game. Domri's not going to do anything. It's a minus three right now. We can kill some creatures, but... Again, we just don't know if, if our top card's even good. So after I've killed my entire... Opponent's entire board, what's to stop them top decking something and getting back into this game? That's the way I see it. So I'd rather just have a better aggressive hand than that. Prismatic Bridge uh, seems pretty good to me. If I do say so myself. With the Chromatic Orrery as well, that's actually god tier. Alright, so I would love to see our opponent tap out without destroying my hand. Ha! <laughs> Alright. So you're saying we got a game on our hands. Crackling Drake, a 0-4 redraw. Cares only about the instants and sorceries in exile and in the graveyard, for the record. Alright, so we want to be careful with how we play this, because we want to get our opponent to counter something. 
So we want uh, a Seeker to be the last card. We obviously want the scariest to go first, so Colossal Dreadmore hits the field. Then we're going to go Clothus. Opponent's got to decide when their counter spells are worth it, and this Clothus feels maybe potentially worth it. Deem worthy, wow. Chromatic Ori, and now we go Prismatic Bridge, and this is actually the best draw of all time. Draw five. <laughs> okay, we go Cosmos Elixir. Uh, bye. <laughs> bye then. Uh, so what we're essentially doing is we're going to bounce a non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to bounce the Chromatic Orrery. Uh, then we're going to draw five more cards. And then from there, who really knows? We're going to play a 6-7 for zero. Banishing Light, their Prismatic Bridge. This eventually probably makes cr uh, Crackling Drake killable. I don't know. Either way, though, that is probably the most absurd hand I've ever had in an Omniscience event in my entire life. Good lord. Next game. Okay, opponent goes first. This is just a pure reactive hand. Uh, we basically only make a 4-4 with this. So I think, well, we make a 4-4 and another 4-4 with Menace. In formats like this, that just does not cut it at all. So we want some card advantage, we want some interaction. I would love to mull into a counter spell maybe, since we're on the draw here. Secure the scene, a Ketra. Well, we don't want to mull to two, so I guess we keep this. It's a lot... I don't know, actually, whether or not I would... Well. Could have been worse. Could have been worse. Metalwork Colossus, that's kind of worse. <laughs> Locust God. Gets to do a redraw, make a token with haste. We get to do that every single turn. We get to do kind of the same thing with a Vigilant Warrior token. Which is kind of cool. And gain life with the Ketra plus Heliod with uh, lifelink. So that's kind of fun. Each opponent discards a card and you gain three life. I might keep that just in case our opponent holds a card. So we're gonna go with a Ketra the True. Opponent can redraw and discard if they want. They don't get to keep the card. Angel of the Dire Hour. Yeah, I think I want to keep this card in case our opponent tries to hold counter magic against me. And then we want to activate this using our Omniscience mana. Want to do it on our opponent's turn as well. They've definitely got the better of the gods. I would say right now. Since theirs represents card advantage and hasty creatures. Colvori, eh? Alright. So I only get to either make a token or give lifelink, which is interesting. Not entirely sure which one. I should be doing considering Metalwork Colossus is coming along. I can either block with a 1-1 or I can block with a Ketra, I guess, and then give it lifelink. I'd lose the tokens, so I guess that's probably what I want to do. Can she even block, though? Oh, she can't block. Never mind. Again. This one can totally do whatever it feels like. And then there's Bontu giving uh, a complete, utter synergy to the Locust God's insane field of game. So let's not take 10. Go to 11. This game feels pretty lost without a top tier card. And I'd say we're at that kind of not good enough level right now. If I play out my hand, I get enough for a Ketra to swing in though with Toski card draw triggers. That one. 
Turski. They can actually look as God for a token um, Bontu. But I think Bontu has to see a creature die before it can block though, right? I don't want to hover it just in case I give my opponent any ideas. So let's go to combat. Going to give uh, a Ketra lifelink here. Yeah, they definitely do not want <laughs> a Ketra getting in combat here. I'm already redrawing a card, so. Uh, let's put... Let's put a counter here, I guess. Rune of Mortality. Crypt, quipped creature has death touch. I will put that on... Feels like it doesn't really matter. I'll put it on the token, I guess. Redraw. Deputy of Detention. Now then. That kind of puts me in a reasonable spot. Because I can get rid of you. When it dies, it goes back to its hand. It's not the same as uh, the other ones, which basically... Uh, the God Eternals... Which, when they get exiled, can go back into your deck. Calyx! Uh, you're not an enchantment. Nope. Good. Calyx's minus doesn't do anything here, so that's kind of nice. We might be getting back into this game. They can tick up. And then they can only put an enchantment card from among it, so this is a bit hit or miss. Looks like they might have hit, though. Nope, they missed. And then gonna get in. Interesting. Alright, so I'm going to... Guess block with my Death Toucher here. And give it lifelink. Seems totally fine, and then I'm going to win. Uh, let's try and make Deputy's attention larger. So Metalwork Colossus can sack two artifacts to return to its hand. They don't have any, so this is just a scry and a drain here, which is totally fine. We're going to basically fill our entire hand up, though. They're going to have to block a Ketra, which means they're going to be taking four hits here. That's me drawing four cards. Yep. I thought we'd lost that. I really did. But, uh, yeah. Just needed that answer to Locust God, and we found it. Pretty sweet. And obviously, we had the Aggressor right here, which is the extreme card advantage your opponent can't come back from. Kind of level of degree of power level, which is nice. Heliod and Ketra, double team. Nice. Alrighty then, let's have a look see, shall we? Uh, ooh. This hand seems okay. I mean, it's a little bit weak to our opponent having instant speed removal. Other than that, we have a threat, a redraw, and a reactive spell. Our opponents took the mull, so they basically have to keep whatever they got here. Gotta say, and I might jinx myself right now, I have not actually seen anyone kind of mull an auto scoop or anything like that, or immediately scoop because they're on the draw. Which is, uh, is a running theme for events like this, where it's like, there's not there's not any point playing unless you're uh, on the play and things like that, which I think is... There is a degree of truth to that, of course, but... I also... Believe it to be false, because the point of playing this is to have fun. 
And uh, you can have fun whether you're on the play or the draw in Magic the Gathering. Rude. Question is, is that worth a Banishing Light? I think it is, because for the lulls, you know? I think it's for the lulls. So let's get that cast out, out the way, bring back that Frosted on. Give Ajani something to do with his counters. What's his ult, actually? Flying and double strike. Cool. Alright, so we have a two turn clock already. What has got Divine Gambit? Actual best removal in this format. And Metalwork Colossus. Alright, so let's get rid of that last card. It is... A board wipe. Alright. Swords to Plowshares. I will not give up. But worse. <laughs> or better, because it made our opponent explode. I don't really know. Could be one or the other. Alright, I think uh, I think we'll go for one more game. Uh, you know, this, this format can uh, outweigh its welcome, so I don't want to make this video too long. But, uh, yeah, it's been fun, though. Been really enjoying it. Hopefully you guys have, too. And, uh, yeah, let's get into our last game. Okay. On the draw. This has got to be, like, garbage, right? Actually, no, it's not that bad. Never mind. I was thinking I was thinking very uh, close-minded on the fact that it couldn't attack or block, but actually what it is is card draw uh, two cards every turn cycle. So it's actually extremely good. Uh, this card, maybe a bit less, but perhaps we can get our opponent to interact with the lesser powered cards so we can drop down the Kefnet and redraw immediately. As a Clothis. Creature or Planeswalker, so we can't hit that right now. Opponent might regret cycling that cast out. I don't think in my wildest dreams I would consider doing that, but... That's just me. Crackling Drake. Well, that's a target for the Prism Realm and potential counter magic bait as well. Oh, Ilharg. Actually, uh, much more likely to get Prism Realms. Creature with power far or greater. No! <laughs> okay. Actually, the Wanderer is where I want to put my Prison Realm. Because she gets rid of my Kefnet and we can't be having that. Vraska's Contempt uh, is technically an answer to Ilharg, but he's one that comes back constantly, so I don't know whether I'm inclined to care. I think I'd much rather have an extremely powerful threat in play instead, so... Let's draw the extremely powerful threat. There he is. <laughs> A colossal boy. Uh, beginning of your upkeep. Exile two cards from your caravyard. We'll put it on Throne of Death. Small card advantage, right? And then we've got uh, creature enchantment removal here. I'll happily trade my Dreadmore with the Ilharg, of course. Get pinged. In response to what our opponent does, I'm always going to be going for a Kefnet here. Let's do it now. Godfarer's Gift. Gorgeous. Well, that just didn't feel like a last game, you know? Why is it whenever I get the I draw 19,000 cards every single turn kind of card? A people scoop? I just don't get it. Just don't get it. Yeah, we'll go for one more game. I feel cheated. Okay, let's have a look-see. What do we got here? We're on the draw. We have a blue-white card, a green-white card. So Chromatic Orrery is a draw three right now. Historic spells get to be cast as though they had flash as well. So I get to do this on my opponent's end step. Or my opponent's turn, in fact. Right, historic spells, historic being artifacts. 
So before they go strategic planning and potentially open up counter magic, I'm going to, on their turn, draw two cards. Uh, we get to play the Wanderer. I think we'll wait on that as a bit of a combat trick because we can prevent non-combat damage that will be dealt to me and permanents I control. So if our opponent goes for like burn spells here, we can flash this in. Which seems pretty good. Basilica Bell Haunt. Um, sure. I think we probably get rid of the Wanderer, in all honesty. It's a nice combat trick to have, I just don't know if it's necessarily necessary. Draw two, lose two, mill two. Let's do that. Switcheroo. And a Johnny inspiring leader. Okay, so we're going to go with Conclave Cavalier. This hand is absolutely disgusting, and I really beg our opponent not to scoop. Why? <laughs> Why, when I get these god draws, do you all leave? Ah, oh, one of the many sorrows of being a content creator. Nobody wants to sit through your good turns, but you have to sit through theirs. Sad. So what we were going to do, and we can't really see what, you know, was going to follow up, of course, but once Conclave Cavalier comes down, we have three colours. However, we don't just fire off Chromatic Orrery there. What we do is we sack Conclave Cavalier with a Blood Divination, drawing three cards. That means that it enters, uh, it gives us some green and white elf knight creature tokens, replacing the colours that we were missing. So we're still drawing three. So that's a draw six right there. We've got the Switcheroo as well, so the remaining 2-2 two -two that we have in play can become a 6-7, plus whatever else we want to do from that point forward. It's pretty disgusting. And I think we were definitely going to win the game on the spot. But I really wish our opponent would have let us do it. Uh, you know what? I I, I kind of like this uh, this Omniscience draft. Uh, this Omniscience draft. This Omniscience event. I, I, I prefer it if it was a draft. I find them to be infinitely better because you get to build your decks and know that your deck is good rather than, you know, build off of a potentially bad one. But yeah, the, uh, the format seemed pretty fun. It had the, the omniscient style of explosive turns. Uh, it had some weird inclusions. We've we kind of went through those in the very beginning. Uh, for those who are curious as well, I got 40 gems from a mythic, and I got 20 gems from a rare, so... You know, when it says that the card will be at least one rare, don't listen to its lies. Uh, but yeah, either way though, that's probably where I'm going to end it off today, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, apologies for it being a short video. I just don't know if these guys, if these videos really want to be 40 minutes long like I usually do for my content. You know, they're kind of a little bit of a side a side gig, I guess. You could consider it. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's fun anyway. Let me know what you guys think down below if you want to see more of this kind of thing. And, uh, yeah. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe as well. Really appreciate it. And I will see you all next time, guys. Have a wonderful night.